First, let's look at the normalized array factor of a two-element array, so n equals 2, with zero phase difference between the elements, so phi equals 0. As we saw in the earlier animation, if d is very small, this array factor is nearly isotropic. However, as the vertical spacing between the elements increases, you can see that the upward and downward radiation strength is reduced, and the radiation is compressed into the broadside direction. At d equals half wavelength, we see very clean broadside radiation with zero radiation upward or downward. As d increases past half wavelength, we start to see secondary lobes forming in the end fire direction, straight up and straight down. These secondary lobes continue to increase in strength as d varies from half wavelength up to a full wavelength. Beyond one wavelength, increasing the separation further will result in additional lobes. Now, what if we instead fix the distance between the elements at a quarter wavelength? So d equals a quarter lambda, and vary the number of antenna elements, n. For this discussion, we will continue to keep the phase difference, phi, at zero degrees. So here is the normalized array factor of the two-element antenna array at a quarter wavelength separation. And here is the effect of increasing the number of elements. So you can see that in this case also, above a certain number of elements, we start to see side lobes, but here the side lobes are quite small. You may also know that the primary lobes are very narrow compared to the previous case. Finally, what happens if we vary the phase difference between neighboring elements, phi? These sorts of arrays that are driven with variably phased signals are called phase arrays. So let's look at a uniform phased array with n equals 5 and d equal to a quarter wavelength, and we'll step the value of the phase difference. Here is the normalized array factor for the case where phi equals 0 degrees, and this is what happens as the value of phi increases. So here we see that increasingly positive phase shifts push the main lobe of the antenna pattern downward until the two sides converge and we get downward end fire radiation. Or here is the same progression starting with phi equals 0 degrees and slowly decreasing phi to negative angles. Here, the main lobe of the antenna pattern is pushed upward until again the two sides converge and we get upward end fire radiation. This effect makes the feed phase an incredibly powerful design tool, capable of dynamically sweeping the direction of the antenna radiation beam without physically moving the antenna elements. It is important to remember that the array factor can only scale the antenna pattern. Don't try to steer a beam using the array factor into a direction that the individual antennas can't radiate. A dipole antenna array arranged vertically along the z-axis will never radiate straight upward or straight downward, no matter what array factor it has, because the antenna radiation in those directions is zero. So notice here, though the array factor, shown in red, steers the beam increasingly downward, the actual array radiation pattern, if the array is built of dipoles, which is shown in dashed blue, is scaled by the radiated electric field of those dipole elements, shown in dashed black, and is totally suppressed in the downward direction. So what we've seen is that a one-dimensional antenna array, a linear antenna array, enables control of the radiation in the direction of the array. So for instance, an array of isotropic radiators arranged along the z-axis may be used to steer the beam in the theta direction, angled from the axis of the array, the z-axis. It is also possible to construct a planar array in which the radiating elements are arranged along two dimensions. This may be used to enable steering around a second axis. Here, the extracted spacing between elements is d sub x, and each column of elements arranged in the x direction has a relative phase difference between neighbors of phi sub x. Similarly, the y-directed spacing between elements is d sub y, and each row of elements arranged in the y-direction has a relative phase difference between neighbors of phi sub y. For an m by n array with a grid of m elements in the x direction, by n elements in the y direction, the normalized array factor is given by this equation, which may also be written like this.